This video will discuss multiple comparisons in the analysis of variance. So we know that in terms of the development of analysis of variance, ANOVA was developed in the 1920s and 1930s. After that, people began to look at this idea of multiple comparisons in the 1950s. And this was done by Tukey, who was a mathematician, and Chaffe, who was kind of a mathematician turned statistician. And so these multiple comparison procedures were developed to compensate for the increases in our experiment-wise error rate, or what we denote alpha sub e. And so this is incredibly important as it becomes evident that we want to compare different specific means to one another uh, in, our, in our data sets. And so a couple of notes on these multiple comparison procedures. The first is that we only will do multiple comparison procedures if and only if after we noted the ANOVA hypothesis was rejected. Now, if at first we did the ANOVA and we didn't find any significant difference across our treatment means, well then there's no reason to go any further. We can just stop our analysis. And so we'll only compare multiple comparisons if we found a significant difference in the ANOVA stage. So we also call this pairwise tests of significance. So multiple comparison procedures, pairwise tests of significance, they're meaning the same thing. There are lots of different procedures for doing multiple comparisons. Uh, even still, it seems like statisticians are continuing to develop different methods for comparing things. Um, they range from more or less conservative. Uh, and this is where you, as the data analyst, have the option of choosing which multiple comparison procedure you might use. Um, and so this is incredibly important because you could technically uh, run different multiple comparisons and get different answers. So my suggestion to you is to be familiar with what you used in your discipline. Uh, as you read papers, uh, look at which multiple comparison procedures they're running, and then use those and copy those and use those same procedures in your own work. So a little bit about how they work. They use a pooled standard deviation and a pooled degrees of freedom. And so this is not unlike what the ANOVA process does, or even what some of our t-tests do. So they account for the fact that multiple tests are being done simultaneously. Again, going back to that experiment-wise error rate. They compute a t-statistic for every pair of means. And so you're comparing here sample i versus sample j. Uh, X bar sub i represents the mean from sample i. X bar sub j represents the mean from sample j. And you might have different numbers of samples in each of those. And so that's the t-statistics that it's calculating. Some given test statistic, if you have mu sub i and mu sub j, we're going to compare that to some value t sub i j that we might find, uh, say, on a t-table or through some algorithm that a multiple comparison procedure has, uh, has done. And that's going to depend on your degrees of freedom, too. And so what we'll call T star star really depends on which procedure you choose to do. That is, which multiple comparison procedure from the literally hundreds that are available in the statistical literature. Here's just one example of one multiple comparison procedure. This is the Bonferroni procedure named after a, a statistician named Bonferroni. And so this adjusts for simultaneously performing many tests at the same time, like many multiple comparison tests. First, we're going to choose an overall significance level for alpha, say 0.05, and then we'll conduct a number of pairwise t-tests. So we can let k be the total number of t-tests being performed. In this case, we can let t star star be the t-value with their appropriate degrees of freedom, and an area of alpha divided by 2k to its right. And so that would mean that we need to take into account the differences uh, on both sides of the distribution of t. And then we'll compute a p-value for each t-test in the usual way. Uh, and so this will be an example of, well, we'll probably rely on r because these calculations get to be complex by hand. Uh, but we'll get a p-value for each of the t-tests using this uh, Bonferroni procedure. And so there are, as you develop more pairwise comparisons, it will be more difficult to show a significant difference for each test. 
And so generally speaking, when one does multiple comparisons, the chance of committing at least one type one error increases with the number of tests you do. Um, remember our type one error is rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it's true. And so to compensate for this, the Bonferroni procedure lowers the working significance level of each test to control the probability of making at least one type one error across all of the tests being performed. And so the Bonferroni procedure uh, in its algorithm already takes into account the fact that if you want a significant test to be done at 0.05, it's going to adjust in the calculations of those t values how you're going to be able to do that. So there are uh, lots of different multiple comparison tests out there. A more conservative test is one that requires greater differences between two means to declare them significantly different. Uh, and so you, in that case, you need more evidence or more differences for sample mean one and sample mean two. There are some that are least that are less conservative. And so we're going to use the Agricola package in R as we work through some of our tests and work through more analysis of variance. And so there are lots of conservative tests, one called Chaffe. The Bonferroni one is more on the conservative side, but there are others called the HSD, SNK, LSD. Those ones are least conservative. And so for some of those more, those least conservative tests, you don't need as much evidence to uh, claim significant differences across different treatments. So again, uh, best to consult the literature for studies uh, that are similar to yours to find out which multiple comparison procedures might work well with your data. How might we look at this with some data we're familiar with? Well, in this case, uh, we might recall the iron content data from Chesapeake Bay. Remember here, we're looking at our response variable is the content of iron in water measured at different spots across uh, different depths in the bay. And so from zero feet, we're basically right at the surface of the, of the bay, all the way down to 100 feet. And as we saw in the data we looked at a few weeks ago, if you were sample data at 100 feet down into the bay, you'd have much higher iron contents than you would for other water depths. And so the way we might show these results in a uh, scientific paper might be something like this. And I bet many of you have seen papers like this where you've seen different letters atop of error bars on top of bar plots. And so these different letters denote significant differences across different water labels or water levels. And so the here are the mean values. That's what you're seeing in the bars. What you're seeing in the uh, error bars uh, or the dash line, the lines here are the standard error bars. What you're seeing in the letters are different uh, letters denoting different significant differences across the different water depths. And so here we can say there are no differences for the water depths at 0, 10, and 30 feet. The water depth at 40 and 50 feet is significantly different from 0, 10, and 30 and from 100 feet. And we can say the water depth at 100 feet, because it has a different letter, is significantly different than both 40 and 50 feet and 0, 10, and 30 feet. And so this is really, really common in how we present some of the data on, uh, we did an analysis of variance. We found out that there are differences across water levels. Now we can say for sure, after we do the Bonferroni multiple comparison test, that 100 is different from 40 and 50, that 40 and 50 are significantly different from 0, 10, and 30. So this is a really common way of showing uh, the differences after doing multiple comparison procedures within the analysis of variance framework.